Hey guys, this is Bobby T, and today I'm going to be explaining what happened during the R Factor 2 Rolex 24 livestream that I did. I'm making this video for three reasons. One, I figured it'd just be nice for you guys to know what happened and what went wrong. Two, I figured it would be useful for other people who have maybe had these same similar type of issues in R Factor 2 or are planning on putting on something like this for themselves offline. And finally, I wanted to announce the new dates for the Rolex 24 that I'm going to be doing and uh, see if we can actually make all this mayhem successful next time. So we're going to go ahead and get right on into things. We had an issue within the game uh, that I'll be explaining later that caused us to have to exit out and uh, revert to using the replay. Unfortunately, when I was exiting the session, the one that we had the issue in, um, the replay didn't save because the game crashed. So we went back and looked at the replays and there was no replay there, obviously. And uh, that was really, really frustrating because I couldn't go back. I would lose like three to four hours. And I decided, we'll just leave it. I'll figure out what went wrong and we'll do this another time. And uh, as it turns out, it was there. And um, basically, it was just an unsaved file. So um, it wasn't the proper .vcr file, which is what R Factor 2 uses for its replays. So with that, basically, I saw online where someone else had had the same issue with an Automobilista, uh, the old original Automobilista. They were doing like a uh, Suzuka 400 kilometer race, and they had had a issue where the replay didn't save. So basically, they went back and changed the unworking file into a .vcr, like renamed it properly, and it loaded up fine. So hopefully, if anything, for some reason, happens to go wrong and we need to load up the replay after a crash or something like that um, we should be able to without any worry but hopefully we don't have to revert back to the replay because the issues that occurred were due to flag rules the first one I was luckily able to get back into the replay without it crashing or anything or not saving and I was able to continue on with the race but I just had a bad brain moment and forgot to um, turn on the pit road speed limiter after I took control from the AI and I got a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. However, when I went to go serve the penalty, it wouldn't clear my penalty, so I drove through the pit lane and it basically wouldn't accept that I had done the penalty. So I figured I would just exit back out to the replay and resume from where we were. However, later on this flag rule issue would come back to bite us when we were trying to get our lap back from the third place car, the number 85 JDC Miller Motorsports Cadillac. And we eventually came up to the car and were able to pass, but the 85 banana boat stuck with us. But basically the game wouldn't let us get far enough away to clear this and it gave us another drive through penalty, which of course I couldn't clear. So I figured we'd just do the same thing with the replay. We'd go back and we'd exit and we'd rejoin the replay. This was when the game crashed and I couldn't get back into it and all that sort of thing. So the way I figured, since we're having so many bugs with the drive-through penalties, I figured the best way to do this is we'll just turn off flag rules. We'll still have blue flags that tell us to get out of the way or, you know, the other cars that were coming up on them. And we'll still have local yellows and all that sort of thing and checkered flag and green flag, obviously. But we won't have to go in and do a drive through penalty if something goes wrong. Um, obviously, I'm still going to be a good boy. And uh, if I mess up, I'm go I don't want it to be unrealistic. I'll go through and serve the drive through penalty. But I'm not going to do it for something as stupid as trying to get ahead of a car that I'm a lap down on. Um, because in real life, if you're trying to get back on the lead lap, even if it's, you know, like a third or fourth place car and you're like the sixth or seventh, you're allowed to do that. You're allowed to race that car for position and get ahead and not have to obey the blue flag. So that was a bit annoying, but I figured this would be the best way to kind of fix this issue. Finally, we're going to get into one of the most annoying problems, and that was the consistent stuttering slash uh, GPU, CPU, physics lag, whatever it was that was going on 
um, that was actually towards the end of the stream that was happening causing the AI to basically ram us and force us off the circuit which I mean it's one thing if the AI are kind of nudging you off the track I mean they're not human but it is really really annoying to just be going into the corner terrified that an AI is going to punch you off Fortunately, after much researching, I was able to find a solution to this. Initially, I thought it was a CPU issue, so I looked at the um, performance bar basically in the uh, task manager for CPU. It was running at 50% just fine when I basically reenacted the scenario that was going on. Um, and we were still having issues and the GPU was completely full so I figured I'd lower the settings and uh, the graphics settings but that didn't really make a difference in the problem anyway it wasn't really the frame rate that was the issue because we pretty much still got the same performance regardless so I decided I would play with Streamlabs OBS and it turns out that the issue was actually running it on my laptop monitor here on the side to see chat and everything and having the game on my main monitor so what I did was just instead of making it extended displays, I just made it one display, minimized Streamlabs OBS, it just ran in the background and played my game, and things ran about 10 frames per second smoother on average, and the physics lag bar that was causing the issue that you can see when I pull it up here should never go above 75% of the way full, and when I was running it, with both screens on it was at 75% or more full which is basically the danger zone and eventually what caused these issues and once changing it around I was no longer going above 75% and even staying below 75% which is still not ideal I know it's because my system is not you know the best system in the world it's just a gaming laptop with a uh, 1060 GTX GPU and a uh, quad core CPU um, so it was really comforting to know that that would work. Um, unfortunately that does make things with chat difficult, but I luckily have a phone mount, um, uh, basically a phone holder provided by my aunt and uncle, thank you, um, that I should be able to look at chat over to the side when I'm driving. Basically I'll just have my phone plugged in to the power strip and um, everything should go well there and hopefully things will run a lot better. The frame rate's still going to struggle in the night due to all the lights that just line Daytona and the shaders and all, but it will still be definitely a playable experience and a much better one than I was having. And most importantly, the AI shouldn't kill me every two laps at night. Lastly is the dates, which I forgot to actually say when I was recording earlier, hence why it's much darker now. But the new Rolex 24 on R Factor 2, I will be doing February 6th and 7th. It seemed like the logical date, considering that the Roar before the 24 and the Rolex 24 will be gone at that point. That way I can see them and also other people who are competing in like the iRacing Rolex 24 and all them, we can go and watch them. But yeah, that's the reason I have chosen this date. I think it makes the most sense as far as going forward because I still want to continue this championship and um, do it on R Factor 2 and share the awesomeness that is IMSA. So that is the end of this rambling video. I hope in some way that this was actually useful to you and that maybe if you've had some of these issues in R Factor 2 with maybe if you're a streamer or you do recording uh, for a YouTube channel, maybe these will help you out some. Um, but you could be having some other issues um, in R Factor 2 as well pertaining to these issues even if you're not a streamer. Um, and hopefully some of these little stats are enough to kind of kickstart your brain and figuring out kind of what problems you may be having. Plenty of forums are always helpful, well most of the time when the fanboys don't come in and bombard your problems with reasons why it's not an issue. Um, and yeah, hopefully you get everything figured out. So that is the end of the video, hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, stay positive, and live on. Peace.